Welcome to the house of the Lord. I'm Pastor David Rose now. God bless our time in his word. Let's begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've come into the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. I'll offer the prayer of the day. Eternal God and Father, help us to remember Jesus who obeyed your will and bore the cross for our salvation that through his anguish, pain, and death we may receive forgiveness of sins and inherit eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of God that is the foundation of our message today is recorded in John chapter 12. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus, Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The word of our God. Lord, open now my heart to hear, and through your word to me draw near. Let me your word ere pure retain, let me your child and heir remain. Amen. I really wanted them to see him. Years ago when I worked at the Sheriff's Department, I called my wife and I told her that I needed her and my young son to take a walk along the bluff in town. And I also told her that she needed to be in front of the Boulevard Hotel at precisely 11.15, not a minute later. There is going to be a big black bus that pulls up in front, and I need you to be standing there to greet the person, to wave and say hello to the person who gets off that bus. I can't say any more right now. I've got to go. What she didn't know was that I and other detectives had been meeting quietly with the Secret Service to plan security for this person's visit. And this person said that he wanted to take a jog before a big speech that he had to give later that night. So we planned out that it would be a good spot for him to park here and then take a jog along this bluff that overlooked Lake Michigan and along the beach and along the lake. At 11.15 that morning, 
my wife and son were at the right place at the right time to wave and say hello to President George W. Bush. Just after he returned back to the bus, a large crowd had gathered because news of his visit had spread quickly and others were hoping that they would get to see him too. Nobody would have mistaken Jesus' disciples as plainclothes detectives or as secret service. They were truly as simple as they appeared. But they had been with Jesus for the past three years. They walked where he walked. They ate where he ate. Who heard Jesus preach more? Who saw Jesus heal more? Who saw Jesus perform more miracles? That's the small band that followed Jesus into Jerusalem and into the crowds that were pouring into the city from all over the world to celebrate the Passover. And as they did, a group of Greeks said they wanted to see Jesus. That's exciting. Why? The Passover was a Jewish festival. These Greeks had come also to worship. That means that somewhere, somehow, someone had shared with them news about the God of Israel, and they had heard about his promise to send the Messiah, the Christ. And that word stirred their hearts to know more, and they wanted to see Jesus. Philip and Andrew told Jesus, and Jesus said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus had healed so many. He cleansed people of leprosy. He opened eyes and ears in addition to hearts. He strengthened weak legs. He drove out demons from people. He raised some people to life. But every person that he helped or healed, would still die. Jesus had come into the world to do far more than heal people for this lifetime. And that's why he compared his life to a kernel of wheat. A kernel of wheat is a kernel of wheat. Unless that seed dies. And then it sprouts and grows and produces many kernels of wheat. Jesus had come into the world for a great harvest, a harvest of souls. He had come to win and then offer eternal life with him in heaven as a free gift to all who believed, free to us, but at a great cost to himself. Just hours after Jesus said this, he would gather with his disciples to celebrate the Passover one last time. He would look at Judas in his eyes and say, yes, it is you who will betray me. He would pray with his face to the ground, his soul overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. His sweat would drop like blood. The soldiers would arrest him. His disciples would abandon him. Religious leaders would lie about him. Soldiers would beat him. Those he had come to save would choose a murderous rebel to be back out in the streets instead of Jesus. And for Jesus, no, for Jesus, crucify him. Crucify him. As true God, Jesus knew all that was before him. Now my heart is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, Save me from this hour? No. It was for this very reason I came to this hour. 
to be the seed that dies and produces a great crop of men, women, and children who will live with him in heaven. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. Jesus in the flesh had glorified the Father. Jesus in the manger proved that God had kept his promise to send the one who would crush the serpent's head. Jesus being the Messiah glorified the Father. Jesus' perfect life glorified the Father. God had glorified his name in his son, the Christ, and he was about to do it again. What does the voice of God sound like? The crowds who heard it that day thought it had thundered. Others thought maybe an angel had spoken to Jesus. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The kind of death that Jesus was going to die was the kind of death that only one person could ever die. And that person needed to be true man and true God at the same time. True man obligated to keep God's law. True man to have flesh and blood to die. But to be the Messiah... He also needed to be true God so that his precious blood would count for everyone. Jesus on the cross was the time of judgment on the world. Not judgment day, but an ongoing judgment that will happen each day until judgment day because Jesus on the cross defeats the devil. Jesus on the cross destroys the power of sin. And three days later, Jesus returned to life, rips the victory away from death. The time of judgment is that all who look to him, lifted up on that cross, and believe in him will have eternal life. Those who do not believe in him are judged condemned. Knowing what he had come to bring for all people, Jesus told the crowd, the man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. Jesus draws us to himself by the power of the gospel. His precious word that saves sinners like us. When he creates faith in our hearts to know who he is and to believe what he has done for us, then nothing is more important to us in this life than him. Better to lose everything here than to lose anything there. It costs something to follow Jesus. We don't make this life our all. This isn't all there is. We thank God for all that he gives us while we're here. We marvel at the beauty of the things he's created. But we also deny ourselves when it comes to things he says don't do or ways to live that he says no. We acknowledge that we are not our own. This is not our life to do what we want with. This is not our body to do what we want with. We acknowledge that we are bought at a price, so we belong to him. We also carve out time like you just did now to say that for this moment, this is the most important place to be because right now I'm in his word. And others will see that we keep coming back for more. And look at this hope and the encouragement and the reward that he gives to us to help keep our eyes on him. He says, wherever I am, my servant also will be. And my father will honor the one who serves me. 
Jesus is the seed who died. Jesus is the seed who lives. By creating faith in our hearts to believe in him, you and I are the beautiful crop that he produces. A heavenly harvest that will bring glory to him and also praise and thanks and honor to his Father in heaven. Far more than those Greeks who had come wanting to see Jesus that day, He wants everyone to see Jesus. And Jesus wants everyone to see him and to believe in him and be saved. At that time, my son had two older sisters who were in school the day that he got to see the President of the United States. Oh goodness, were they upset that they missed that. A whole bunch of people could not believe that he and his mother just happened to be at that place at that time to get to wave and say hello to the president. What are the chances? Well, (laughs) if someone tells them, the chances are pretty great. There is nothing secret service about this good news of Jesus. The father wanted everyone to see him from Bethlehem to to Galilee to Calvary to the ends of the earth to draw all people to himself. He didn't have to come. He wanted to come because from eternity, his heart wanted you to be with him. As we draw closer to the end of another season of Lent, I thank God for this opportunity for him to prepare our hearts through his word to follow our Savior to the cross, to see once again his boundless love for you and his gracious love for me. He wants us to see him. He wants everyone to see him, to believe that he is the son of man and the son of God, to see that he is glorified by the Father because he is our Savior, our King, our God. We can't know the day or the time when he returns, but we can keep watching for him And we can tell one more person about him while we wait. And I'll be glad to help you because I really want them to see him too. (laughs) Amen. I'm going to offer a short prayer that I've written for today and then invite you to please join with me. We'll pray the Lord's Prayer as we close. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of faith that you have worked in our hearts to see and believe in Jesus as our Savior. Help us to point others to see him too. Please guide leaders everywhere so that we might enjoy your gifts of peace and the blessings of freedom. Protect and guide all who are serving in our United States military and all who are working in public health and safety to keep us safe and free. For all these things and for so many more, we ask you in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. I thank God to be able to share this with you. God bless and keep you in his tender, loving care. And Lord willing, I'll see you real soon.